Yeah, when there's literally nothing left to do. Exactly, yeah. You know, I'll do things like, uh, I'll clean the boat. I'll do anything. anything. Not to write. <laughs> hours and hours. Yeah. And yeah. then f you finally get into it and you go, I should have started this days ago. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, that was the conversation I wanted to have. No, but we'll, we'll go back to that. Um, how do you describe what it is you do? Um, exactly as the title is, ghost detective. Uh, if someone reports to me that they've seen a ghost or there's a ghost been reported by anybody, yeah. I will go to the location and find out about the, the sighting. Yep. And then go into the history. The, what could have caused that? Who? It was there an accident? Was someone killed? Was there an, a murder or whatever? Whatever it was. Yeah. But you need to go with the history as well as the sighting as well. But I don't like to do places that have been done before. All oh, right. No, I won't go to somewhere that's been done before because there's no point. Why is that? Because I'm writing about it, and I don't want people to read something they've already read. Right. And that's the, that's the whole reason I started writing. I was collecting ghost stories in books and I kept on getting the same stories like um, you know uh, some of the priory or something and it would appear in six books and yeah. I, I was getting fed up with it so yeah. I thought I went onto the radio and I said I need new material yeah so I just do new new material new ghost stories is it difficult to find new stuff um, it, it was at the start uh, I just collected people's ghost stories and I went on to BBC Radio Northampton and I asked for people's ghost stories, thinking it would be all local. Yeah. Forgetting the motorway that runs through the centre of Northamptonshire. <laughs> and I was getting South Africa, I was getting Australia, I was getting all sorts of places. Right. And uh, it was lovely because I went to interview the people, collected their ghost stories, and that's where it started. Yeah. But then I wanted more. I wanted to find the mechanics of how it worked. And some of the people I've met over the years are fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And that's what I love. I love finding the people, yeah. investigating the cases, and also going through their history as well. Do you think there's a connection between the type of people who see ghosts or believe they see ghosts uh, and the ghosts themselves? Do you it think can be. It's, it's, it's a match of sensitives, if you like. Um, if you can imagine animals have still got their sense... We're at the bottom Mm. of sensory yeah we've given up so much of yeah, years, we we? have yeah. and a lot of people have retained more of these senses than others so you can get especially women yeah more women than men have retained this sense and they can sense things about to happen it's like an empathy yeah you have with people yeah. and uh, they can sense things going to happen and that's what it is they've retained the senses and when they go into a place and there's a ghost in there, the ghost is just a recording, but they can pick up on it. That's I was going to get to that, but okay. I was going to tell you my two ghost stories, because yeah, I've seen a couple of things. There was one time in a, <coughs> an old uh, cottage in the Highlands of Scotland, and there had been like a sheep shearing cottage there before. There was It was a very old place. And I remember I was lying on the sofa dozing off, and somebody looked over the sofa to make sure I was all right. There was this gen genuine sense of she wanted to make sure I was all right. The strange thing was, it's very difficult to describe, but she appeared in negative. Everything else I saw, as you normally see it, but there was a woman who appeared in negative. <coughs> and then the next morning, as we left the cottage, having stayed there for a few days, I looked back and I saw her just walking down the hill, satisfied that she'd looked after me. And it was this, as you say, a sense of you know, real empathy. She was just making yeah. sure it was okay. And then the other time, I was on the whole island of Linda's farm with my wife, which is a wonderful place. Yeah. Like, you can feel it, you really feel the vibe. And the har was coming in off the sea. And of course, you could say we were, you know, I was seeing things through the har because your eyes try to make shapes. But it was half past one in the morning. Yes, we both had a good long drink. We were sitting outside the hotel with the har moving in. But she saw exactly what I saw. I was saying, do you see that guy running for his life? It was presumably a Viking raid or something. Yeah. Do you see that guy running? Oh, he's fallen. And she was seeing it as well. So, I mean, again, it's interesting that you called them recordings. That's my general sense. Something terribly emotional happened in a place and it is recorded somehow. <coughs> yes. Um, but what amazed me about that experience was that my wife saw what I saw and she wasn't the type to agree with me just for agreement's sake, you know? And that's very unusual as well yeah. for two people to see it. That's what I thought. Yeah, well. very unusual. Yeah. Because a lot of the times when when you when you say about a ghost in a recording, it's that's what it is, but it's a super recording. Because not only have you got the vision, you've got the sound and smell 
and emotion. Yeah. When that's, yeah, that's you feel the emotion, it, yeah. you can feel yeah. it when you walk into it. Yeah. And it deteriorates over time. And when you said about the negative uh, view, yeah. what will happen is uh, the, the, it'll go semi-transparent, then over the centuries it loses colour, then part of the image will disappear, and then the whole image will completely disappear over time. And all you're left with is sound and smell, right? You hear people saying, I heard a knock at the door, I opened yeah. the door, there was nobody there. I heard someone climbing the stairs. But when I looked, there was nobody there. I'll tell you something else about that same place where mm. I saw the negative image. It was at the top of a little hillock and there were a bank of trees behind it, yeah. former part of a forest, I suppose. And I always hated those trees. There was a nastiness about the trees. Yeah. And I mentioned it to the guy who owned the estate and a couple of months later I was back and he said somebody else came and said... Has anybody reported a bad feeling amongst those trees? And he said, yes, a couple have. And she said, I've dealt with it. It will never happen again. And he said, go up and see what you think. And I'm not going up there. But I did. I went up and sure enough, whatever it was, was gone. And the person who dealt with it was very confident that she dealt with it. Yeah. And I think yeah. what's fascinating about that is, well, what's fascinating to me is, is it the person that triggers the playback of the recording? Or is it always there to be played and it plays itself out? Or... Will it last for as for as long as it's been played a certain number of times? It will always be there, and it will deteriorate until it's no more. And it's interesting when you say about um, a woman or person going to this place and saying, "I've dealt with it." Now that is um, firstly, I, I, I have no religious belief, right? but to believe, people often ask me, "Do you go? Do you clear houses?" No, I don't. I investigate the houses. If I was to clear a house, it would mean I would have a, a belief in religion. Ah, right, yeah. So to actually say I've dealt with it, I've moved them on, or anything like that, you need a Christian religion. I can't. I I cannot do the job I do. Yeah. With a belief of uh, any type of religion, because I need to see things in a focused way. I cannot be sidetracked. Yeah, because if you're sidetracked, I, 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 I work with people with Christian beliefs and all types of beliefs. Yeah. And that's, I haven't, there's no problems with that at all because that's how they get through their life and yeah. that's what they believe in and that's yeah. fine. But when they say to me, how can you believe in an afterlife if you're not a Christian or you don't believe in heaven and hell, I say, I have a belief after interviewing people and seeing what I've seen over the years, that we carry on in a purely natural way after we die. Yeah. But I don't have that faith that you have in your religion. Yeah. You know, that's that's the that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. Do you know what fascinates me? I keep saying this. It's one of my favourite little things to say. But see if you meet somebody who is completely convinced that there's nothing after they die and that's the yeah. end of them. What amazes me is why they tolerate a life of like working at McDonald's or doing nothing with it. If, if this is all you're here yeah. to do, do more, please. Yeah. You know, yeah. but that's yeah. each to their own. It's fascinating because a lot of the times when you meet people like that, they've actually got a belief system stronger than they admit. That's interesting as well. Because I think a lot of people, they say they've got a belief system in order to avoid...